Welcome back to my channel. Today I am flipping this really rough garage sale find. This is the stripper I'm going to use. It's 15 minute. Works really well. That's my go to. There's putty knives to scrape it off. This is for the little um, cracks in the wood. Get that out. Residue. You can use these little scrubber pads. Steel wool.
here I'm using a paper towel. It's a very thick kind, almost like a fabric, uh, but you get it on a roll. It's kind of like a, a shop paper towel. And I'm using the most out of it I can until it's just too messy and I get another one. Keep wiping it back until the desired look you want. And uh, if you want the process to go even faster, then you can wipe it back first with paper towels and then use a microfiber rag that will wipe it back even more clean and quicker. But it depends on what look you're going for. I decided to go with using the same Briar Smoke Gel Stain color under this lid as I'm using on the body and also I'll be using on the top as well. And I'm doing at least two coats. Here again I'm doing the same method to the doors. And I'm using an oil-based gel stain, and so it's thicker. It's easier to work with as far as vertically than a regular thin stain. But um, I'm using this specifically because I like the tone of the warm gray, but also it's going to leave a tint on all of the pink color. So as I'm wiping it back here, you can see how much it leaves a tint. And you can um, wipe it back further to clean it up more and more and let that undertone of paint show. So you can do it to your desired amount, but it is gonna still leave a tint on that original color, um, even after wiping it back very thoroughly, which I do. But if you don't want that look and you just want the dark inside the details, you can spray poly over your main base color and then that way afterwards when you apply your stain it will wipe off much cleaner or you can use a water-based stain and that will clean up uh, much cleaner as well and not leave that kind of tint on the main color. I originally was going to do a typical stain method but the look that it gives in the picture I'm going to show you in a second isn't thin enough to me to show the wood and it's not thick enough to be full coverage. It's kind of in this weird place. So here it is kind of more farmhouse. So I decided to do a solid color instead. All right, so we're gonna do a clear coat now. I have this ferrothane polyurethane triple thick. It has pretty good durability. It's in satin um, and it has self-leveling properties. Um, the ways that I would suggest to apply clear coat or polyurethane, polyacrylic, whatever. Um, I use this sometimes. You put some water in it, then, you know, push the water out of it in the sink so that it reduces the amount of bubbles when you're putting your product on. If you use this, it's probably gonna have the smoothest coverage, but it's gonna do a thin layer. So you're gonna need to do it at least a couple times, but it's gonna be like the most streak-free. It's really good. You can get this on Amazon. It's a Dixie Belle knockoff or one of these, and I don't really know what they're called, but this is a good option, or a synthetic bristle brush. Uh, sometimes I get little bits in the end from other projects I've done in the past, so a way that I sometimes fix that is with some sandpaper, push it in there, roll it in circles, and then kind of just fill the bristles until they're nice and soft, um, build up free again. Uh, this is gonna put more product on so that's a good thing but there'll probably be a bit of streaks as compared to the blue sponge um so but any one of those are fair fair options when i'm using polyacrylic or polyurethane like in this clip i make sure that the little section i'm working with is completely saturated everywhere so there's not going to be little spots that show up later on that didn't get product and show up with a different sheen because of that. So I make sure that everything is covered first in the little section I'm working with, and then I go back over with long strokes from one side to the other, trying not to pick it up in the middle because I don't want little marks showing of the brush strokes where they stop and end. I would use the little blue sponge 
that's really the best for not having any strokes but I have these little metal strips on both sides to work around. And here on the end, I'm showing the easiest way I know of to get an even coat on the edge, first going over vertically and then just sweeping motions left to right, super easy and smooth. This is a 500 grit sandpaper and you put it in some water. So you're gonna be doing a wet sand so it's going to be really velvety. After this, I don't want to like sand down to the color, of course. I just want to get a bit of those pieces of texture down a little bit. And after this, it's going to be super velvety soft. get any of those little specks that you can find in it any kind of like little texture bits that you don't see when you're first doing it you can film for sure if you're not in a super dust free area All right, so I need to tell you something because I'm messing up a lot, which means I'm gonna learn from it, but it's a pain. So these brackets do not line up the same with all the ends here, all the edges, I mean. And some of them have like the top and end piece smushing into the wood or it doesn't move smoothly. So I'm like trying different ones on and some of them definitely fit nice in the pockets and this and screw holes line up and all that stuff really well and other ones don't. And um, also, I put this little piece on and then oh and by the way my drill just scratch that up so I'm gonna have to retouch but um and then I put this little bit on here and then this is where the screws go through and up into that right there the little screw holes right there it keeps the door shut and so I put it on and then this was all screwed in and then I closed it and I found that the screw holes did not line up with the holes in the cubby at all. And I'm like, well, that's weird because this is the left side piece. It has a lip here. That's right. I'm like, well, let's check the other door. And so then I grabbed this one, which is also a oh, don't drop it, left side piece. And you'd think because this was like, you know, some, some companies sold this piece, you would think that they had like the same measurements. But they don't like look at how far it is in here and then over it is here so so i tried this one out and put this one in the cubby and the screw holes that go through here line up great and so this is not the door so i had to unscrew the door and i'm gonna have to screw this one in so basically what I'm saying is if you can find like a, a number system or something like that, so you don't have to guess on all the brackets, um, it'll save you a lot of time. All right, we are all done, but first let's take a look at where it started. I really loved how this one turned out. It's very modern, but warm and welcoming at the same time. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please comment down below and we'll see you next time.